What is that next group? What is that next industry? I think there has been a real government focus on teenager protection. So it could be live streaming. But the one thing all of these sectors have in, con in common is that they're new economy sectors, which have seen very aggressive growth and high profitability. And these aren't rushed decisions. Um, you've really seen a pickup in these regulatory changes since the 100th anniversary speech for the Communist Party on July 1st. And a lot of this follows what's been laid out in the five-year plan, which talks about common prosperity. And what does that mean? That means lowering education costs, um, housing prices, reducing the cost of raising children, reducing wealth inequality. So I don't think these are rush decisions. I don't think they're anti-capitalist or meant to cut off foreign investment, I think it means a strengthening of the Chinese Communist Party's position and a, you know, a clear message that they're going to focus on achieving common prosperity. Do you think that regulators are worried about the impact this is having on its own stock market? Maybe they don't care about foreign investors in the stock market. They certainly, though, care about foreign investment. And they do care, I would imagine, about domestic investors as well. No, I, I do think that you know, China wants capital. They want it on their terms via the exchanges in Shanghai, in Shenzhen, and in Hong Kong. So I definitely think there's an awareness about this. But I th think that the Communist Party takes a very long view on this, and they lay out plans for five years. And in a lot of these plans, you know, the um, intentions were very clear, common prosperity, upgrading digitalization, um, also self-sufficiency in technology on a five to 15 year time frame. So I think what they've targeted are the areas where there hasn't been much regulation, but they've had very aggressive growth. They've had very high profitability. I don't think they're going to do anything that really you know, damages the overall objectives they have um, for infrastructure. And I think we've seen episodes like this before. You know, so um, you know, on, over the long term, you know, I, I think that uh, you know, the, the outlook doesn't really change, but I think you could see some harsher than expected regulation forthcoming for the next quarter or two in certain sectors in the internet sector and other sectors like live streaming, fintech, you know, even some of the medical industry that you know, ends up being, being impacted. Hey, Joyce, it's Tim. Thanks for, you've been doing this for a long time. So, you know, you, you've also been watching China um, plan this course for making their markets globally investable. And I think JP Morgan, and you've been very measured about comments in the past saying, hey, this is really very important to them. Take a, take a deep breath and, and they're moving forward and they're not gonna get too far out of line here. But the issues you're talking about both socially and, and in terms of the, the new economy and the digital age are significantly bigger, I think, than their markets to them. Do you have a call on this? Because we, we just care about how we're gonna be navigating these markets right now. And I, I agree that the social issues are complex. Um, aren't we collateral damage for the foreseeable future? No, I, I, would, I think the capital flows into China were much higher than um, expected, you know, given that you had the pandemic. Nobody would have thought at the beginning of 2020 that you would have $575 billion of foreign portfolio investments go into China during the year of the pandemic. So I think what you've seen are some very aggressive growth very high profitability, you know, that was that occurred very quickly. Now I think the government is saying that look, we want to see more transparency, more regulation. We also want to see that monopolies are addressed. You know, a lot of these same issues are coming up in the US as well. So I would not be surprised if you see more rules on fintech, on antitrust penalties that could be announced. But I don't think they're going to change the overall framework on um, capital into China. And you know, still, we have things like China's inclusion in the index occurring and flows that still are close to record flows, even with the events that we've seen. So it's a longer term view, but I wouldn't rule out the short term volatility continuing and more regulation still to come. Last quick question, Joyce, and that is what is your top, what is your favorite emerging market to invest in from an equity perspective? And is what is happening in China, does that influence your pick for this top emerging market? Well, you know, we had actually gone overweight in some of the Latin American countries, and it was about the value story, you know, not the growth story, that you still will see, you know, a rebound from the lows. So Brazil and Mexico, we had gone overweight. We also still like the energy sector, so Russia, you know, as well. So I don't think that China affects this. I think China is more of a local issue. And even over the longer term, I don't think it changes the overall China story for foreign investors. I mean, China is going to approach capitalism in a different way. 
Um, and this has been very targeted to new economy sectors, which have seen very aggressive growth in the last two years and very high profitability. I think it's very domestically focused what their objectives are. Joyce, thank you so much. Good to see you. Joyce you. Chang. Um, for foreign investors, Joyce said, uh, Pete, for you, does this matter? Does it make some of these names like a Baidu a no-touch for you? You know, uh, quite honestly, Mel, I, I've gotten more and more concerned over the last year or two or more um, about some of these Chinese names. And, and because of that, I have shifted just completely over to just options. And the only reason I've done that is I feel much more secure. I know exactly what my risk reward is. And I feel far more comfortable because of that. Because when I'm looking at these as stocks, boy, I, I tell you what, we just don't know. And, and she mentioned a couple of different times there, she talked about the communism and, and uh, the communist approach and so forth. And when I heard that, it, it just, it, it dawns on me once again that they can make decisions that maybe I don't really uh, want to follow along with and doesn't make sense to me. And because of that, I'd rather be in the options where at least I have that flexibility and I know exactly what my risk reward is going into a trade. I, I think I'm listening to Joyce. And again, I've been listening to Joyce for a long time in emerging markets and she, she and her team do a great job. She, she's basically what I heard was don't worry about it. Um, Longer term, don't worry don't, about it. Don't worry about it. Money quarters. flows are, you know, China's not going to be that big a deal. I'm kind of, I mean, I'm a little surprised to hear about it. Not that, again, it's a, a rational view, but but China's weighting in the index is 43%. I mean, you can't tell me, if, by the way, if you removed uh, Tencent and BABA and, and had a, some of the composition of the index uh, more like it was 10 years ago to domestic stories like Chinese banks and insurance companies, I'd say all day long. But, but, I mean, these are companies that I do think are still in the crosshairs, and that's a big part of the waiting. But, I, look, again, I, it's a great view, and I do think Tencent and Bob are great companies. Um, I, I think right now there are headwinds.